find out like what deals there are. But hey, man, that's what that's what happens, right? When you lose it, uh, and then like I always check Raku Ten. I told you about that, right? Where you get the money back. Yeah, it's a oh, it's man. it's a big uh, Barcelona sponsor too. They're like Barcelona's main sponsor. And the Warriors, I think they do the Warriors as well now. That is it. No. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, they haven't played in like a year, so. Yeah, who knows what's happening with the Warriors. Hi, everybody. Welcome into the Real <laughs> Show podcast. We were just talking about saving money, and I need a new laptop. So I've been checking out Woot, W-O-O-T dot com. And this is not a sponsor or ad. Hashtag or ad. Hashtag ad. Um, Hashtag ad. It's just a website I use, and it's awesome. Like You can find really good refurbished laptops uh, for like under 400 500 bucks, even MacBooks. So if anybody wants that. And then, of course, I use Rakuten, R-A-K-U-T-E-N. And you legit get your money back. It's awesome. And here's a little secret for you. This is not an ad. Use my link in the promo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this isn't an ad. But here's a little trick. If you do listen to Sirius XM, here's what they do for you. They give you 15 bucks for signing up for 5 bucks a month. So if you're already going to get Sirius XM, like you're already in the market, you know you're going to get it. Wouldn't it be nice to get 15 bucks back on a check a little bit later? Like they send it to you every quarter. So it's awesome. I love that website. I've made $200 back on stuff I was going to buy anyways. Look at you. Yeah, that's what we're about. That right? unemployed you... life. Yeah, that's right. You try to cut costs and figure out how to uh, make money somehow, some way. How you been? <laughs> how you been, Mr. Uh, employed? Man, I'm all right, man. Uh, first day of vacation was a very uh, boring one because uh, I got a ticket about mid-May, and I'm finally getting around to doing the, the defensive driving for it, which is absolutely brutal. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing that all day. Isn't it, it defensive driving is the absolute worst? I want to get your story, but I'll give you mine real quickly. Okay, anytime I got defensive driving. I don't know if I should say this publicly. Hold on, let me rethink this because <laughs> I don't want, I don't want the uh, jig to be up per se. But huh. anytime I got a ticket when I was growing up, somebody would always just take care of it for me and just sign the defensive oh. driving papers. Interesting. Yeah, like I don't oh. think I ever, I I never took the actual course. My wife got one last year and she took the course online, so she was in your boat where like she actually took it because the guy that used to do that for us i think he passed away unfortunately and i don't know if Damn. the family yeah like i don't know if, if it's a family, the family business, business continued yeah. <laughs> i don't know but like it was a legit defensive driving school uh but just because we knew the guy i would just roll up get my paper signed boom i'm out and i'm done with defensive driving damn that would yeah. that would have been that would have come real in handy with this because it is so boring and it's like oh the top rated comedy one and it's supposed to be funny and oh, they're brutal. absolutely brutal yeah so and it's like it, yeah like how's it been for you taking them so uh it mine is supposed to be a five hour one that's split into six six sections so i was like oh this shouldn't be too hard so i get through the first section pretty quickly in a little under an hour and then I start the second section, which is essentially relearning the driver's license, uh, just the driver's license course all over again. When I turned 18, I did that course online. And it's essentially that course all over again. And that section took me two hours. And the part I was telling my friends about this, the part that's like insulting about it is like they make you sit through these hours and hours on vi of videos just to ask you like these little basic ask, ask questions like, What's what's an actual distraction on the road? The A, the color of your car, B, texting and driving, C, like something random that doesn't make sense. Like the questions are obvious as hell. And you sit through all these shitty videos for two hours and it's just like it's a scam. You're paying thirty bucks for for the the torture of sitting through subject for five or eight hours. Yeah. It's it's such a it's such a scam. Because if, if let's say you got pulled over for speeding, right? Then just take the speeding portion of it, right? Like you would assume like everything else is good because you haven't been caught. So why not just take that portion and not turn this into a 
a racket pretty much because it is a disaster. So I, I want to correct myself. I did take one in 2014, no, 13. Um, and that was like when the jig was up, when my guy was no longer there. So I had to do what you were doing, like looking up those, hey, funniest Texas uh, defensive driving course. And it is so bad. And you're right. The quizzes make no sense. Like there's no point in paying attention yet. They still do it. Like, I wonder how much, how much kickback the government gets for that too. See, that's, that's my thing because, so you go up there and you, you pay the court fees and then they're like, Oh, you need to go take this class and it's 50 bucks, but here's this promo code. So mm. to knock it down to, to 20 bucks, and uh, if you give us eight more dollars, we'll email you your certificate that you passed. Like it's all like it just adds up. Like if it wasn't it wasn't for the fact that it added your ticket to the record, you might as well pay the ticket. Yeah, that's a big thing, because on the insurance, you get screwed. You get yeah, screwed so I, hard, man. I think my ticket would have been like a little bit under three hundred dollars. And I'm going to spend that anyways. Mm -hmm. If there's one thing you guys learn from this podcast, and you might already know this with the insurance claims on your auto insurance, like if you can pay the damage out of your pocket up to, I would say even a thousand bucks, right? For the most part, I think we all have like $500 deductibles on an accident. So if you can, and that like you can pay it out of your pocket in the long term, you will save so much because your insurance rates skyrocket. I had, I had two fender benders and I made the mistake of claiming this on insurance, right? Like that's the yeah. right thing to do. And it was a disaster. Like I'm still, my rates are so high because of two little fender benders. Then they get you with, you know, when you're at like uh, a gas station and safe light or any kind of window chip repair company comes yeah. up to you and they go, oh yeah, we got this little chip here and it's not going to cost you anything. We'll just bill it to your insurance. Well, if you do two or three of those, guess what? Your rates go up because they see that, oh, this guy has been constantly claiming these. So it, it's like That's, you have to be really careful with it. I think you had mentioned that to me once. That's mm -hmm. such a scam. Like, And all the commercials make it seem like, oh, we'll do it really quickly during yeah. your lunch break and we'll take care of you. And no, we're actually going to screw your insurance rate. Yeah, like one, once is okay, but what happens is they get you every time, right? Because there's always going to be a little chip on your windshield, you know? Yeah. So the way you combat this, if you're in Houston, you're listening, there's a guy on Westheimer and <laughs> San Felipe. Hashtag ad. Hashtag ad. Chris, um, he's like on the corner, you see him. It's like this old used car lot that has no, like, why, did, why is there a car lot in the middle of Westheimer? <laughs> Uh, but he's over there and he'll fix it for like 10 bucks. He, oh, is that, like, is that the guy across the street from Ecos? No, no, no. Mm. It's like up, uh, it's past Foss. I want to say it's San Felipe. No, it can't be San Felipe. I for, already forgot all my Westheimer streets because I haven't driven Westheimer in such a long time. So I, I, I don't remember the streets to be honest with you, but my dude is over there and he is awesome. So like go there, go there and he'll do it for five, 10 bucks and he won't put it on your insurance. Try to mm. keep your insurance as clean as possible because that way your rates are going to stay low. That's the you biggest thing. Are you advocating for hidden runs? No, I am not advocating that. I'm advocating pay out of pocket if you can. Okay. Just yeah, wanted I, the clarification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A huge clarification, right? Obviously, if you if it's a major accident and <laughs> you know the damage is like three thousand, four thousand dollars, then it makes sense. Like you claim it, and it works out in the long term. But if it's if it's a fender bender, or if it's something that you can fix, you know, like you can pay the other party, pay him uh, or her a thousand bucks and just take it care, man, just do it. Yeah, like whatever it is, right? Like I'm telling you, up to a thousand bucks do it because i for me personally like i did the math i lost so much money because i thought i was saving money by just doing the deductible and it made no sense for me because till this day until that accident is off your record there's no point there's no point like you're just gonna pay out the wazoo and then the other one uh, i was talking to an insurance guy it's turned into insurance talk because i love insurance talk um what you can also do is like go to different providers and yeah. he told me like, hey, you were with, um, uh, who was I with? Progressive. And he said, look, Progressive 
has these claims, but if you come to Geico, you're, you know, you haven't been with us in a few years. And to us, it's like a clean slate. So come here and our rates are going to be lower and they definitely were. And oh, then wow. before you leave the other insurance company, go ahead and get your windshield repaired and get it, uh, <laughs> and get it replaced because that doesn't count against you when you go to a different insurance company. Okay. Why aren't you slanging insurance? I, dude, at this point, I just might because I have so much time to learn something new. I might become an insurance adjuster or something. I've always wanted to do that. Like the guy who drives what? up to a car. Yeah. And you get to assess Why? the damage because you hold so much power. Your decision could impact somebody's life. What are the, what are the things without going to school for another okay. four years? Could you do that? That's a good point. Let me see. All right, you, like, could go, I could you could go teach. Ruin you. you could go teach. Uh, you have to go to extra school for that. But not four right? years. How many? How much? You said four uh, years. Okay. Well, do you have extra school for a teacher certificate? Yeah. You do, right? But you can become a substitute, I believe, without there you go. extra school. Okay. You could you you could be subbing right now, and teaching all these kids about uh about insurance, insurance fraud. I might, well, not, I, I might not literally do. right now because it's summer, but yeah. Which speaking of man, did you see what happened in Georgia? I did not. So one school, one of the biggest districts, um, I have a story on my phone. I'll pull it up here in a second. Um, the teachers returned to school for the first time and I didn't guess how many uh, positive cases they had. Uh, the, in the whole district or in the whole city of, of uh, the whole city of Atlanta or where was this? So let me give you the, the headline real quickly. Uh, blank employees of largest school district in Georgia have tested positive for coronavirus or are in quarantine because they came in contact with somebody that had coronavirus. 563. Uh, no, a little bit lower. A little bit lower. But that's, oh, damn, uh, I oversold it. You oversold it. See now you're just you're just doing fear monger fear. Porn. No, no, it's not gonna be. Calm down, Aubrey Huff. Now yeah. it's not going to be uh, as as fun. Three hundred and twenty-eight. See now you're still working for Outkick. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm are just calling do, it like I see it, bro. Are you gonna Are you gonna do daily updates about this now, like yeah. Clay Travis? Uh, no, it's at two hundred and sixty. Two hundred approximately two hundred and sixty employees have been excluded from work due to a positive COVID-19 results or contact with a case. That's one school. Then there was another school in New York, I believe, where the kid was walking around, he was positive, and they just shut the whole school down. They're like, you know what? Yeah, this is not going to be worth it, guys. Let's just shut this bad boy down, and we'll figure this out because this could get bad. This could, this is exactly what you don't want. It doesn't matter if kids aren't yeah. spreaders and this, and there's new, by the way, there's new information regarding that as well. turns out kids can spread coronavirus or the COVID-19. I, I don't know if you have an answer for this because I've been trying to formulate an answer. So I don't kind of, I kind of don't expect you to, but I'm going to ask anyways, why is the federal government pushing so hard for schools to reopen? That does, it just doesn't make sense to me. Man, is there some sort of there's... funding to it? Like, I don't understand. So uh, one of my neighbors is a teacher and he like he is going back on Thursday to start their training, quote unquote, and figure out like what the next steps are. And like his district has no idea, by the way, he told me. Jeez, I, I don't know about the federal level, but I know from a state level, he was saying it is huge. The funding plays a big part in all this. Because schools and districts don't want to lose their funding with the online only model. So there's something at play there. And he said, he simply said this, and this is somebody that is in the business. He just said, if states come out and say, you guys will not lose your funding, most schools will just go, okay, cool. We'll just go online then to be safe. Yeah. So there is money at Jeez. play. Yeah. And well, I can imagine from a, from a President Trump standpoint, right? Like his base is all about, this thing isn't as serious as we think. Right. Yeah. So why not get back to school, right? And like give your base what they want. So there could be some of that at play. I don't know about the funding side. So I, I would have to research that. Hashtag follow the money, baby. Bro, there's, it's, and, and look, as a parent, I understand the frustration. Like I totally get this, man. It gets exhausting. And I have one kid. 
Okay, so I can't even imagine with, you know, uh, families that have multiple kids yeah. where one of the parents needs to work. And, and look, I have one kid and my wife is still working. Luckily, like we're blessed with that. I'm unemployed, right? So I have the time. So when I was still working and uh, baby Trickster was home with me, dude, it was hard. It, it gets it gets hard, right? Like to take care of a kid. Both parents are working. Um, so I understand the frustration as well. Yeah. But, but I, I think you, we just have to suck it up, right? We, you can't risk so many people, you know? So uh, I don't know. Like I feel bad for my neighbor. Like he has to go back and they're doing online schooling. But yeah. eventually they're going to open schools up. For us, it's four weeks of online schooling at Fort Bend. And after that, they're going to reevaluate everything. But all signs right now are pointing to them having in-person schooling after the first four weeks. That's brutal, man. Yeah. And then the other layer, and uh, Roel Garza in the chat, uh, love this. Let me go and put this up there. Uh, you guys don't think poor kids are going to be more impacted by having only online classes? Tough choice, tough. Uh, yeah, there is that as well, right? Like the same neighbor told me, he goes, dude, the amount of kids that just didn't show up once all schooling went online was incredibly high, right? Oh, wow. and, and he's like, that's, and he goes, and he's in a pretty decent district. I don't want to say which one. And yeah. he said, just imagine the bad districts, right? Like the ones that are in the lower income neighborhoods and schools that are in those neighborhoods. Um, the kids might not have the technology. It's a struggle yeah. right now. Like Fort Bend, it's a pretty damn good district, right? They're struggling right now with getting enough equipment for everybody that needs it. It's a hard yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, that's in play as well. So my my cousin yeah. is uh, is a, a teacher in HISD and she goes through uh, last school year she went through like she would go like through days of not not hearing from some of her kids mm. because they don't have internet or their parents uh don't speak english and don't ha don't know how to help them log into all of these things so uh yeah man that told that's that sucks that's the, that's the part, that's the downside to all of this right yeah there's there's major decisions to be made and i'm not and look i understand both sides I, I not the political side stuff i don't want to get into that but I can see it from both sides where parents like me, where it's like, dude, suck it up. It doesn't matter. I don't want to put teachers at risk. But again, we're fortunate enough to be in that position. And I can understand from parents that have three, four kids. And they're like, can you please send them back? This is, this yeah. is undo it. Like we can't do it, right? Like you can't teach three or four kids online schooling. It, it's just, it, it's hard, right? So I understand both sides from a parent's per a perspective from a federal state and local government uh, perspective, I don't know. There's, there's just so much, there's so much at play here, right? The what's going to happen with their, with the testing, right? Because third grade on, you have to take the, is it star test now or tax? What is it? Yeah. It's star test. I think star it's a test? Star, star test though. Yeah. yeah. You have to still take that. So are they going to make them take it? You know, I'm like not, I, probably I, not. Knows, right. Cause last year they did not yeah. Everyone, you just moved on. Everyone got a free pass. Like, go go get out of here guys just move on we don't want to deal with the headache and that puts those students behind the eight ball because they missed a good chunk of schooling it's not like it was just a week or two you know so like now those kids might be going to the next grade not prepared and then they're going to be behind right yeah. so it, it, there's just so much at play here man I, I it's a tough decision i get it uh and hopefully this all works out but man 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 we're about to hit we're about to hit some rough times ahead, man. And we've been through a lot of rough times here, buddy. Yeah, it's not looking good. Okay, let's we do good news. Let's do good news. We're doing good. Is it the bubble? Are we talking about the bubble? I, I want to go one more good news before the okay. bubble. Because okay. the bubble is going to take up a lot of time. All right, hit me. What's up? How do you feel right now knowing Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, is our boss? <laughs> I I was I was a little confused when I woke up to that news. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know, for those of you listening, uh, Jose and I used to work for the Houston Roughnecks, and the XFL folded because of the pandemic, and it was up for sale. So before it hit the auction blocks, it was just up for a private sale, and guess who bought it? The Rock. 
Do you think The Rock gives it back to Vince for everything that Vince has done for him? No chance. No? You don't <laughs> no, think so? Zero percent. You don't think The Rock has one one last heel turn left in him? Oh, that would be awesome if he did that. Especially, There's not, not, after, especially after announcing one of the first female like league owners. Yeah. Right? And uh, that's his ex-wife as well as part of the group. So that would be a major heel turn if he says... Yeah, by the way, I'm giving this to Vince because as we see, uh, because it's played out so publicly, it doesn't matter if you're a president of a league, if you quote unquote run the league, Vince will always run the league. Vince always see. wins. Yeah, like with uh, Oliver Luck, everything that's so public, he was the president of the XFL, did a great job establishing the new league and brand. He legitimized and, it. Yeah, it was awesome. And he did a great job with it. Like he... Legit made it a great league, hired the right people. That's harder uh, to do than most people think, right? Like to make the right people uh, leave their really good jobs to come with a startup, which by the way, folded like that sucks, right? So um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you do all that. It's still Mr. McMahon calling the shots. And I'm telling you from behind the scenes stuff, I can't talk about it here. It was <laughs> Mr. McMahon called a lot of shots. Mm. Are we gonna put the uh, the expose behind a paywall? Yeah, paywall seven ninety nine. If you want to hear the story, <laughs> you want to hear the re- the real stories. <laughs> the real stories behind the XFL, the dark turns, the happy moments. Yeah, Brandon, who was uh, at, at the games, he was awesome. Like he's one of the fans, and that's how I got to know it. Uh, Brandon, and he's been a loyal listener ever since. So you're welcome, Jose. I brought him over. Um, hey Brandon. <laughs> but uh yeah, we were there game one. I went and hung out with him for a bit, did a hit with him. It was so much fun. But The Rock is now the XFL uh owner, one of the co-owners. But uh I messaged somebody on Twitter today about this, and there's there's still a lot of different things that have to clear, by the way, like from a legal perspective, business perspective. But once it all clears. I don't know if bringing back the XFL is going to work a third time because right. fans have been burned twice now, right? And I get it. It was a pandemic. It was something different. But the plan was no matter what, we're going to come back. And that didn't happen, right? So you get burned. And I know The Rock brings a lot of goodwill to all this. But one of the big things in the press release that stood out to me, and I knew this was up, this was one of the big reasons why it's an interesting property to own was the intellectual property and, of course, anything web-related that comes with that. So, like, social media accounts, partnerships, uh, current leases, deals, all that, the branding as well. Like, The Rock could just release a ton of branded stuff, and people would buy it in those markets. Could he turn around and flip that intellectual property to the NFL or the MLS or another Mm -hmm. sports league? That's a great call. Yeah. If somebody, let's say Washington wants to buy the defenders instead of uh, the football, Washington football team, they would have to buy it from the The rock, Rock. right? If the roughnecks, if somebody wants to buy that trademark that the rock owns it now. So that could be a huge play for them. Um, You know, like, look, the rock is one of the most popular social media accounts on the planet. So he doesn't need social media help per se. But those accounts built up a lot of followers really fast, and you can make some ad revenue off of those. Uh, so I don't. And look, fifteen million in the grand scheme of things, that's not that's not that much money. No. Fifteen million for a league is nothing. Fifteen million right now in the sports landscape won't get you like a percent of a team. <laughs> you know, so he bought an entire league. I think they bought it for something else. I don't think they bought it just for the return of the XFL like that. I, I don't know. I, I I think that's not enough. Fifteen million for the XFL. So I'm sticking so, with he yeah. bought it. He bought it for Vince. As a little thank you, thank you yeah. for making me the biggest star on the planet. And like, uh, and the rocks like guys. Uh, Vince put me there, but you know, I took my career like after I left the WWE. That's when the star really took that off. That is true. Yeah. Right. Like that was it when he did that baby movie. Which one was it? The. Uh, <sighs> That horrific movie. When did the Rock? Do you think, do you, the, was wasn't it the Mummy? The, the the Mummy sequel. The Mummy sequel was big. That was his main one. 
That was his first big one, wasn't it? Yeah, like that was that was cool. But what made The Rock turn into The Rock? Was it Fast and the Furious franchise? No, I feel like it was before that. By that, at that point, Walking Tall is that one of his one of his good movies? Is that the one with um? Oh, who? Why am I blanking? Mm, never mind, I'm blanking. I forgot who it's with. Um, when did The Rock turn into The Rock? That's a good question. Was it a TV show that maybe? So let me see. I'm scrolling through his IMDb. The Scorpion King is the one I'm, we're talking about. Yeah, that was big. That Wa- was Walking Tall. Who was in Walking Tall? Do you have that in front of you? The Rock and yeah, who give else? Me, who was the co-star in that? I thought it was somebody huge. Johnny Knoxville? No. Okay, maybe I'm confusing the movies. Hmm. And Michael Bowen? No, no, definitely not. Okay, so that one wasn't it. What was after that? What was the rest of the IMDb for The Rock? I feel I, to me to me that's the next the next big one I see on there is Gridiron, uh, the Gridiron Gang. That was a pretty good movie, but I, it's but not I, that not one. mainstream. Yeah, it wasn't mainstream. He was in Hannah Montana, apparently. Nah, that was on the back. Get end Smart. Years. Get Smart was okay, but he wasn't the star of that. Tooth Fairy, what? that's the one you're talking about, right? I'm talking about Tooth Fairy. The no, other what? guys? No. Transformers? Ooh. He was oh no, he he voiced he voiced uh oh, he voiced a, a Decepticon in nice. a Transformers animated series apparently. Uh did yeah. He ever, he, did he ever star in a Transformers or am I thinking of John Cena? I yeah, that was John, John Cena. C- that was John Cena and Bumblebee, right? Yeah, that's that one was actually really good. Yeah, I heard. I need to watch that. You told me it was pretty good. I need to go back and watch it. Okay, so what was it? What was his biggest movie that made him into a a celeb a list celebrity, not just a celebrity, because he's always a celebrity. What was it? I, I think it was Fast and the Furious, Jose. That it might be that he was he was in Fast Five. Yeah, because that, that was the time, first one Fast he appeared Five, in. It looks Fast like. Five was pretty big, right? The Fast and Furious franchise was still pretty that big. That was in 2000, then, yeah. What was it, 2012? 2011. Okay. And then... And then he followed that up with uh, Journey, the Journey 2, that movie that Brendan Fraser was in the first one, and for whatever reason he wasn't in the sequel. That mm-hmm. came out that same year. So he kind of just like started stockpiling movies. Okay. And then it took Nothing. off. It was a lot of uh, of uh, a lot of duds, but uh, nevertheless, that that is one of the big. When you look at the Rock's franchises, like he's involved with, obviously Fast and Furious is number one. Uh, that's a huge deal. Ballers is a good show. Excuse me, um, but then there's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot, lot of, of misses. Yeah, right. Um, what was the game? The game one with Kevin Hart that just came out, um, part two of it. Oh, that uh, Jumanji. Those, Jumanji. Those. He's he, he's uh, on IMDb. He's apparently like, there's a movie in post production. He's filming one. There's another one in pre production. There's another. There's three in pre production. One in post production, and one that he's filming right now. The man does not stop. He is he is relentless. That you have to give it to him. And he has a tequila brand. He's doing the game show Titan Games on NBC. Um, yeah, like, dude, there's a lot. The Rock doesn't stop, right? He's like Kevin Hart. They might put out a bunch of duds, but they don't stop. Like, they are going to cash every single check, and I love that. Like, take advantage of every opportunity. Why not? Mm. I'd rather he be on a lot of indie hits. What, what do you but want then again, him on? Then again, what do you want he, wouldn't, him on? He, he wouldn't. He wouldn't be. Uh, he wouldn't be buying the XFL right now if he was on indie on indie. Uh, yeah. Folk, what do you folk movies? What do you want him to do? Like redo Garden State or something? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the Miami version of Garden State with The Rock? The Rock crying on in the bathtub like like uh, Zach Braff does. Dude, <laughs> you just have the shins. Can you? <laughs> so so last Rock with Natalie Portman because we're just gonna recast Natalie Portman into that role, just crying in the bathtub. Man, that, w- that would be intense. And she has her helmet on, of course. <laughs> Whoa, there's nothing funny about seizures, bro. Dang, Jose, I didn't know you were like that. 
That was like a moving... how? her helmet. That's... That's a beautiful movie, man. That is such a good, that is one of the best movies of all time. And I think when you go back and watch it, it's not that good, frankly. But when you watch really? it, really, I think my first watching of that movie was one of the best. Like I was just like, this is incredible, right? Like it's so good. The soundtrack lines up perfectly. Uh, you have an Did emotional. You cry? Con- I didn't cry. No, I don't cry in movies, except for Interstellar, which is incredible. Of course. And who, what, what did Josh say? What, what was the space movie that you always talk about? Real? I was like, yo, don't you dare talk about Interstellar like that. Because that is one of the best movies of all time. Uh, but when I first watched that movie, I was like, man, a soundtrack. It, it was a great soundtrack first. It was a really good performance. It was so different from the performance that we've usually seen from Zach Braff, right? At that point. Yeah. That, right? So um it, it was such a good first watching and then i remember watching it again and i was like eh, it's okay i've only seen it twice recently and both times i liked it okay so you still like in your in your current day you still like it yeah i, I might have seen it for the first time four years ago and i liked it and then again two years ago and i liked it as well and okay watch it in portland with a uh, geo h- high out of his mind <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a good way to watch it did he cry he was passed out like halfway through. Um, okay, the que- the other movie question I have for you because we I, we will spend a lot of time on before the NBA we move bubble. on from the Rock. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Nabil makes a good point. Rocky is trying to be the modern day Arnold from the eighties and nineties. I don't hate okay. that. I don't hate that either. That's that's a fair thing, right? Arnold grew into a multi billion dollar industry. Yeah, like my dude, my dude was. All over. Arnold was a governor. Yeah. The Rock is going to be the president 2024. You think that soon? You don't think he takes like the governor of Florida first or, or something something local no. first? No? You, has the Rock You're right. Ever it's, done? it's the Rock. It's, it's the, the rock. rock. Go big or go home. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm just going to do it. Uh, shout out to Nabil, by the way. I was on their podcast, Nabil's podcast, over the weekend. Dude, I did like, let me see, one, two, three, four podcasts last week. Do you have and another love- uh, podcast week? Uh, yeah, I, I just uh, everyone that hits me up for podcasts, I have time now, so of course I say <laughs> yes. But uh, I like going on other podcasts, right? Because I want to know how they're doing it. I want to feel their energy. Like, hey, what what are they doing different that we're not? So I love doing it. So shout out to them uh, for doing their podcast. And I'll, I'll, I'll of course I retweet everything. So of course tag me in it and I'll I'll send it out. But um, I did uh, John Westling's podcast. Do you know I John Westling? Yeah, I did. No, his. I, I I missed him. No, I don't know yeah. him. I've never I've never uh, met him. What's his, um after later? I believe is his podcast name. And if you like sports radio podcasts, like I got really deep into the business of sports radio. Ooh, stuff, yeah, like stuff, but stuff that we've talked about. You know, oh. some of the diversity issues and not the paywall stuff. We're gonna start posting. No, you know, stories like, oh, I didn't even listen to your show. To be honest with you, so we're just gonna take the show away. The Real and Dell show. That story, huh. I talked about it, but I didn't say you talked. You talked about that story. I talked about it publicly, but I didn't say who it was. Hmm. I didn't say the man who said those words. True story. I lost the Raheel and Dell show because the person who made that decision never listened to the show and he wanted to put someone in there that he did listen to that nobody else listened to. So there you go. A little shade thrown. Um, Jose dash partita dash four on Venmo. Send me $7. I will tell you who it was. Oh. <laughs> uh, Nabil's podcast is not your weekly sports pod. So you can look that up as well. And then after later, with uh, John Westling. So there you go. And uh, of course, Barry. Uh, support Barry on deck. Because he loves being on deck. He loves a good, <laughs> nice deck. Likes, He likes a nice deck. Yeah. Um, okay, so is that everything? Anything else you want to talk about The Rock? Uh, we, we've talked plenty about The Rock, I feel like. The Rock is our Beyonce. <laughs> no, every, Beyonce. Yes. Beyonce is our Beyonce. No, no, no. Beyonce is... Every every female strives to be want to be Beyonce, right? Like the way she, her career, her elegance, sure, all that. Sure, sure. Every guy wants to be The Rock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who do you want to be? Maybe uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. No. You, you know, I rather, I rather, I rather be one of the best uh, soccer players of all time than uh, mm. hit or miss actor. No Just chance. Saying. No chance. Just saying. You gonna you gonna put in okay, you get to be Cristiano Ronaldo, but you still have you okay as like your 
you have to put in the the grind. You got to train that hard. You got to perform on the biggest stage. Or do you want to wear Under Armour and pretend to be an athlete and then just go on Titan Games and just say a few <laughs> lines and then go on set and do a few lines? What are you talking? The Rock is the ultimate. Mm. Man. I feel like we could come up with a better ultimate than The Rock. He's up there. Man, I can't think of uh, I okay anybody right like in the worth. Uh, how much is the Rock worth versus Cristiano Ronaldo? The net worth has know. to be. I'm trying to think how much. Uh, let me take a guess. I would say Ronaldo is worth because he's making like eighty to ninety a year for the last like eight years. So he's probably worth like six hundred million. Who are you looking up right now? I'm looking up the Rock, but I can't seem to find it. Okay, I'll look up Ronaldo net worth real quickly. I'm gonna say six hundred to seven hundred million for Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm seeing three hundred and twenty million for The Rock. That's it. That feels low, right? Yeah, maybe we're just really rich. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity net worth has Ronaldo at four hundred and fifty million. Yeah, I'm seeing four hundred four hundred and uh, sixty six million. So around the same thing. Oh, so all of our, all of our picks. I guess then we'd just be Jeff Bezos, right? But then you're a dweeb. Do you want to be? Yeah, a dweeb? I don't want to be Jeff Bezos. I don't want to be dweeb, right? Like, there's only the Rock has enough money to to uh, last a lifetime for us. That's true. Uh, Gronk is another one. I don't know Gronk. No, no. Gronk. Nah, I, that's not enough money for me. If I get to pick anybody, I'm not picking the Gronk. Because then you could party. If you're The Rock, you can party like Gronk if you want. And you've got all that money and the XFL. And you've got your health that Gronk doesn't have. Oh, I don't know. Dude, The Rock's health. I mean, the the man is a physical specimen. But he's had a ton of surgeries. Has he? From, yeah. Now let's play this game. The Rock surgeries. You're going to be shocked. <laughs> I, dude, it's like it's double digits for sure. How many surgeries he's got. I mean, he... he... I totally spaced. Like, I think after both of his matches with Cena, he had to have surgery. Because mm -hmm. remember, he came back and did those those two matches with Cena at, at Mania. After both, he had to have surgeries. But yeah, guy. that soccer Google money is crazy. <laughs> yeah, soccer money. Your soccer money is pretty dope. Uh, and and his health for the most part, he has it right. Like, okay, I I can give you Ronaldo, I guess. Okay, let's talk about uh, one thing. So the question of the podcast, uh, what classic movie have you not watched? And the reason I'm asking you is this. On Saturday night, I finally watched The Usual Suspects. I've never seen With that Joel movie. With Joel and Barry? No, not that one. Not the radio show. But <laughs> well, shout out to them. Um, R.I.P. Yeah, I mean, their show was named after that movie. They, you know, the intro, all that. I had always heard of it. Uh, I knew what the, you know, some of the references, but I'd never watched The Usual Suspects. Have you seen it? No. I it's haven't. really good. It's really good. Who's, who's it, in it? The Baldwin brothers are in it, I think. Uh, the Baldwin is Alex Baldwin are in, in there. It? Uh, one of the Baldwin brothers is in it. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito. Did I say oh, really? Right? Yeah. Yeah, you did. And you, you don't even recognize him because he looks nothing like Gus, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and then the Academy Award winner for Best Supporting Role, Kevin Spacey. Who hmm. I didn't I didn't recognize either. I'm like, oh wait, I think this is Kevin Spacey. Because it's they they look so young. The movie was made in 93, 94. They look so different in that that like halfway through, I'm like, wait, that is Kevin Spacey. That's and it's a really it's a good story obviously it, it has like 90s movie uh characteristics where at times it gets a little cheesy the cgi is not good and all that but it's still a great story i'm trying to find uh jean carlos posito a picture of him in the movie oh you you, you won't write you know why it's not even on there because people who upload it they don't even know it's him it, he looks so different oh man right he look, yeah, he's really young. There's no gray hair. He kind of uh, looks like Lupe Fiasco. Yes, that's a good that's a good comparison. He does there. So yeah, I, I recommend it. It's a pretty good movie. Obviously, it's a good movie. I mean, it had the Academy Award winner, good acting, good turn at the end, all that. 
Um, but which which or what classic movie have you never seen? Taylor says he's never seen Snatch. Me either. Oh. Jose. I just snatched your soul with that one. <laughs> Jose, you've never seen Snatch? I'm not a big movie guy. Man. I thought you knew this about me. Yeah, but these are classics. You I gotta mean, watch apparently. you gotta watch Snatch. Oh, it's a uh, heist movie. Oh. No, 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 but it's a uh a guy Ritchie heist movie, right? So it's different. And who look at the cast. Where can I stream Snatched? You can watch it on uh, Prime. You can watch it on Amazon Prime. You have that, right? I do. Okay, you better. You're employed. If you don't have <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> Snatch is, uh, Brad Pitt is incredible in it. And don't watch it with subtitles. You got to watch it without subtitles. Because it's like, you got to be in the same position I was when I first watched it. And you leave, you're like, what? What the hell did they just say? (laughs) What did he just say? Because Brad Pitt is incredible. I don't want to tell you what his role is, what he does, all that. You just got to watch it. It's it's a great heist movie. Snatch is a good one. Uh, I've never seen Avatar. Really? I've never seen it. I I missed it when it came out in 3D and the movie theater experience, all that. And I just never... I never wanted to watch it after that because I missed out on it. I actually watched it like on TV one day and I, I liked it. I don't remember much of it, but okay. I, I, did, I did think it was good. Not you, the, we're going to take 10 years to make the sequel and it's going to be the best movie of all time good. But it was good. Is it, are they still working on that? I thought it already came out. No, God, that'd no. be embarrassing if it came out already. <laughs> There's no movies coming out ever again, so... Have you driven by a movie theater recently? They're ghost towns, yeah. Man, it's scary. It is so scary. It's just like there's a whole industry just wiped away. And they will rebound next year, I think. Once everything gets back to normal, because there's going to be how many releases in 2021, right? Like how many major releases got pushed to 2021 because of our current pandemic? Yeah. Dude, there's going to be back to back. That's going to be TV in 2022 is going to be undefeated. Mm Mm-hmm. 2021 movie theaters is that's where the money is because everyone's going to be there every single week because one, there's like this need of going. And then two, it's going to be because there's just so many blockbusters in a row. Like every, you might have tenant and black widow on the same weekend because there's just no other yeah. weekends to put it right. Like it's right. just, that's just where it's going to be. So uh, yeah, you guys can uh, post in the comments. What, what movies have you never seen? Like classic ones. All uh, right. I've up? got one that, that might confuse okay. you go i've never seen from a franchise uh uh an entire movie from this franchise star wars i'm kicking you out jose that's unbelievable i've never i've never seen an entire i've never sat through an entire star wars movie why is it i've seen parts i've just i don't it just hasn't happened i've seen parts of them it's a huge time commitment okay they're they're long movies the the order that you watch them in, they progressively get better, which is nice. Uh, but you'll you'll okay. My wife never watched Star Wars either, and we did a rewatch recently. Remember I told you because uh yeah because they're all on Disney Plus now, which is great. Um, she was like, "Wait, this is it?" Like, at t- <laughs> you know, like because it's like it's from the seventies, right? Like seventies, eighties, nineties. Uh, late 90s because that's when the force no which one was it uh, Star Wars 1 in the actual timeline is Star Wars 4 but that's yeah, pretentious yeah. as hell yeah and the, the the line that because it came out 3 4 5 came out first yeah or sorry 4 5 6 came out first and then the prequels 1 2 and 3 had one of the greatest characters of all time in Jar Jar Binks who just like people hate him for no reason, but he is the force. That's the a, the funny alien guy. Yeah, it's the uh, stereotypical. They, it was like a Jamaican. Mm. It, it was dude, Jar Jar Binks in 2020 would not work. <laughs> I'll just tell you that. It's Walt most... mentions Walt mentions Godfather. I've never seen Godfather either. Okay, Godfather two is you should watch it just for the cinematic experience. It's awesome. I never got into Godfather either. Are you you're not a big mob movie guy? I hate mob movies. I hate them. Like I made fun of I used to get 
guys at sports radio stations love mob movies, and I used to make fun of them. I was like, yeah, they were. That's quote, like the typical yeah. like sports radio guy. Oh, I just love mob movies, bro. Yeah, but but again, look, mob movies when when a lot of sports radio hosts and listeners, because it's an older demographic, when they were growing up, mob movies were in. And that storyline, like you want to become a mobster, right? That was in. So I can understand why it's such an emotional connection. To me, I never got into it. The like Godfather 1 was like, okay, whatever. Godfather 2 was a great cinematic experience. Like you got to watch it just for the shots, the way the movie goes. It's awesome. And it's like five hours long. Godfather 3 was an embarrassment. Goodfellas. <laughs> Goodfellas is another one. Like people quote Goodfellas so much. And I just, I'm like, okay, whatever. And I'm like, all right. All right, like, oh, yeah, don't disrespect me. Hey, don't disrespect me. Hey, hey. All that. Like, I don't just never, I never got into all that. So, uh, yeah, like, Taylor slandering one. your Taylor slandering your boy Jar Jar in the of comments. Course, you know why, Taylor? Because you're a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> you're a sheep. You can't, you don't have original thoughts, Taylor. Okay. <laughs> wow. How you do that? They're coming at Taylor for no reason. Man, Taylor just caught some today. Sheeple. He's a sheep. Si- Silence of the Lambs. Oh, great movie. I've seen that. Absolutely. Did I ever tell you the story of uh, the first time I, I watched Silence of the Lambs? No, tell me. <laughs> so I was scarred, I was scarred uh, from watching uh, scary movies when I was a kid because of that. Was Mel Gibson in Signs? I think it was Mel Gibson. Yeah. Uh, and that movie just terrified me. And I've, I must have been like six or seven. So since from that point on, I never watched scary movies. So the whole time I just thought, I just thought Silence of the Lambs was a scary movie. So in college I was in a film appreciation elective class, which was an awesome class because we just wrote like papers on on movies and or whatever, and it was really fun. And we would just watch movies in class. And then one day we were going to watch <laughs> Silence of the Lambs, and I was like, oh boy, I I, con- I considered like not going to class that day because I was like, I do not want to watch a scary movie. Like I don't like them. <laughs> and then we watched it and I was like, oh, this was actually pretty incredible. Yeah, it, it's more like a, a it's psychological a yeah, yeah. A psychological thriller. It's not a scary it was, movie. It, it, was inc- it was an incredible movie. Yo, Walt has never seen Lion King. Damn. Walt, I feel like old, he's lying. Walt, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? And, are you uh, lying for clout? Yeah, more like Lion King. Get it? <laughs> uh uh, bodied. <laughs> he's never coming back. <laughs> he's never. He's done. You bodied uh, him for life. Uh, there's a lot of good ones. Snatch is another one that is getting brought up. Lord of the Rings. Have you done the Lord of the Rings trilogy Mm-mm. and the prequels? Mm-mm. Did you like? Okay. Did you like Game of Thrones? I've. I've. Nope. You haven't done Game of Thrones. Mm-mm. I didn't yeah. have HBO till like two years ago. And by that point, the show had already fallen off, and I knew enough of it to I was it, I was like, "What's the point of me even watching it?" Mm. Wow, Jose, I'm shocked right now. Okay, Walt is 42 years old, and he's never seen The Lion King. I get, you, there's no reason for Walt to watch the new one, so that's fine. Like, why would a 40 year old man go watch <laughs> a new Lion King with it's just Nat Geo, pretty much. He was but, 27 when the first one came out, in which yeah. case. Okay, that makes sense. Like, would you go watch a cartoon movie that Disney puts out today? Yeah. You would? I would. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. But that's like, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm kind of a nerd. Did kind you of see, by the way, the uh, director for Toy Story said that the toys do actually die? I did not see that. No, are you are you messing with me? No, 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 for real, because uh, somebody was tweeting at him about that. And, you know, like the whole thing was that toys, they they always exist, right? And the yeah. only time they die is when you stop playing with them, right? Or die, they just, they, they, you know, like you need to play with them for them to stay alive, pretty much, quote unquote. But he did say that, let's say if a toy fell into an incinerator, he would die. Like that would be the death of him. Like how they almost died at the end of, of, of three. Yeah. Which you're right. Toy Story three was such a good movie, and then Toy Story four was like, let's get more money. Let's, let's get this money. That was a money yeah. grab. Coco. God, that movie is not that good. No, it's so bad. It's Dinesh has never seen Scarface. Have you seen Scarface? I just saw Scarface last year for the first time. What'd you think? 
They should have uh, casted a Latino actor. That's what I think. Ooh, hot take. Al Pacino's accent is atrocious, but it's a hot. it's a great movie. For the, the time, the, though, for the time, though, you had to. For the like time, they're remaking like, it. it yeah. They're remaking it now. There's no way they don't cast a Latino actor. Have they announced any of the cast members for that? No, I don't think so. How are they remaking it? it didn't that come out like early this year? Oh, I don't know. Why would you remake Scarface? That is like legit a movie you don't need to remake, and I don't even yeah. know if it worked in twenty. Yeah, they are they are reboot they are rebooting it. So what's he gonna be doing? Like pushing oxycodone? <laughs> I just think, I don't think Yo, so. I, don't, I think it's going to be a period piece again. You think so? There's gonna be a period yeah. piece in the eighties. It's just gonna, it gonna be, be yeah. It's gonna be a remake. Are you you think they're gonna modernize it? Yeah. Like what if Scarface is part of Antifa? <laughs> I mean, if we're gonna do this, let's just redo the whole story. No. What if it's two friends that's not, that's trying to work fly. their way up Antifa, and that's no. the whole story? No. Yo, come on. Wouldn't that be a better story than the same old story about being a drug kingpin and all of a sudden you get all the money, you lose it, and you lose your life and all that? Yeah. Seen it. Seen it. You know what I de- what haven't seen? Two friends, immigrants working their way up the Antifa ladder. Taylor Taylor makes a good point. Remaking uh, Scarface is like remaking Tombstone. Never seen Tombstone. Total Dallas also makes another p- good point. People still buy cocaine. <laughs> yeah, but not in the volume that they were pushing in the 70s and 80s. And specifically the 80s, right? Because that's when Scarface was. What's What's the name of that movie, uh, that documentary? The Pharmacist, the documentary series mm. of Pharmacist. You did watch that, right? I, I've seen it. Yeah, I think I have. The new Scarface should be the doctor from the pharmacist, <laughs> uh, Doctor Jackie, whatever her last name was. That she was pux- pushing oxy. Yeah, in, that's in, in New Orleans. That's there. You go. We just figured this out for them. I told you it should be oxycotton because then because at the time when did Scarface come out? Was it eighty two? I feel like it was later than that. Later than that. Um. But it was also a big part of the conversation about the drug culture and the drug problem yeah. in Miami, right? So wouldn't... 1983 Oc- is when it came 83. out. 83. Come on, son. Man, how you gonna mess with me on dates? Film appreciation class my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't pay attention. That was a, that was a gut punch. <laughs> that was like, come on, man. That, that's sad right there. Um, but... <laughs> it was at the time, uh, uh, it, you, like you're talking about what's happening. So right now, it would be more important, either that or he's a CBD, uh, like he he's pushing CBD because that's also in right now, which is legal. Alamo that's legal Remedy. though, yeah. AlamoRemedy.com. Make sure you watch it. 2001: A Space Odyssey is a good one from Nabil. Again, I've never seen that. Me either. I, I've never seen it, but I know the influence of that movie on Interstellar is huge. So I should go watch that. Okay. Let me see. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, man, there's okay. Original Lion King came out in '94. I was 16 in New Orleans while crime rate was breaking murder records. I didn't have time for movies. That's from <laughs> Walt. Okay, Walt. Wait, you were 16? Did I do that math wrong then? If he's, he says he's 42 now. 42 now. It came out in '93. '94. '93. I just did. I'm 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 26. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. right, sixteen. I did the math okay, wrong. Yeah. So he was sixteen. Yeah, he's he's trying to stay alive, Jose, and you're killing him for not watching Lion King. Good job. I wasn't he, killing him. He survived New Orleans in nineteen ninety four, but you just killed him in two thousand twenty. Great work, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all do, love. Walt, do me a favor. Watch the Lion King, okay? And tell us what you think yes. next week. I want to know what a forty seven year old man or how old is he? Forty two. Forty two year old man thinks about the Lion King and watch the cartoon one. Don't watch the Nat Geo one, yeah. which is the new one because it sucks. I didn't like it. I, it's so stupid. I didn't watch it. I was like, why is it? Uh, other than Gambino singing. Which I listened beautiful. to the soundtrack. Yeah, the Beyonce and Childish Gambino songs, but yeah. I didn't watch it. Where Gambino saved the whole soundtrack, that one? Yeah, I know. Did you watch <laughs> Did you watch Blackest King? No. On, not yet, right? I need to watch it. I need to watch it because it looks I'm on, awesome. I honestly haven't heard of it. It's Beyonce's. Uh, oh, that movie. okay. That's the name yeah. of it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I believe it's Black is King, right? Wow, I might be. 
I might be canceled if it's not. <laughs> what is it? Are, are you looking it up? I feel horrible. No, I'm, no, no you gotta I saw look it. it up. Yeah, it is Blackest King because uh, NBA was teasing it all week long or all weekend long in the bubble, which gets us to the bubble finally. Jose, we, <laughs> we waited 54 minutes into this show to talk about the biggest story of the weekend, the nonsense that is the NBA, NBA Twitter, and the NBA, NBA bubble. I'm just going to let you – I'm going to give you the floor, okay, because you are so excited to talk about this. You go, and I'll, I'll go off of your takes. Man, it was it was better than I anticipated. Like honestly, the 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 presentation has been incredible. The conversations about social justice, which are important ones, have been have I think they've they've hit it on the head. Whether it's pre pre produced packages that they do before the games or during commercial breaks, or it's in post game interviews where they get the players specifically get asked what they think about a certain thing, and they talk about the social issue they're talking about that day. Uh, or why they have whatever they have on the back of their jersey. The presentation, it, it feels so much different, but it's so refreshing. And it kind of feels like a video game. That's the only way I could really think of putting it. Mm. And it it just, it's, it's, it's man, it's, it's an awesome relief. I, I didn't feel, I'm a big baseball fan, I'm a big Astros fan, but I, I honestly didn't really feel anything when the baseball season started. Yeah. And the you. the moment I watched that that Jazz Pelicans game, neither team I root for. Zion's an incredible athlete. He's he's uh he's already one of my favorite personalities in the league. I was very I was emotional watching that game. Like it felt like it felt like normal. Maybe normal isn't the right word, but that's the only one I can think of right now. Despite no, the circumstances is. we're in, despite the fact that there was no fans in mm -hmm. attendance. It was You're just, right. It is normal. It was a, it was it was like releasing pressure. Like it was really awesome. It was mm -hmm. and it helped that the first couple of days, pretty much every game was really close and came down to the wire. Yeah. There were intense games. There were really good games. The presentation was outstanding from the jump. Like that Meek Mill presentation that That was that, that was, was phenomenal, right? Like and they yeah. didn't they didn't short chain it, right? Change it, right? So it was like all right, you know what? Um, let's just do like a one-minute pre-produced package. No, they they spent like five minutes talking about everything that has happened in the last four months. They talked about obviously the racial injustice and the protests that came with um, with everything and uh, George Floyd's death. Right? They talked about the pandemic. They talked about um, uh, everything else. But then they also took the time to talk about reform, prison reform. Yeah. with meek mill in his case right like they took the time to do all of this and then the jerseys i thought were fantastic and they started adding last names by the way uh as of today i don't know if you noticed that or not but that's why under the, the number under the number which which is yeah. look you need to put it because there's a lot of guys that new people might not know right like you, you're watching these games you're like who is that i don't know who that is and that's fine um i like the fact that it's under the number because yeah. obviously if you if you have this, this the message on your jersey, mm -hmm. which I also understand if players are opting out of doing that, I don't yeah. hold it against them. But it's like in big letters at the top of the jersey, like they traditionally are. And then, by the way, of course, we're gonna get memes of those. Like, like man, people were roasting Gordon Hayward. People were roasting uh, who was it uh, in our group thread that we were posting pictures of? Man. Uh, it was a white player, obviously. We were roasting him. Oh, gosh, I'm blanking right now. Was it Did, Caruso? Was it Caruso who had the J uh, R Smith? Was he was like, is that is that uh is that is that Plumley? No, no, uh, no, not that one. It was something about their jersey. It was a me it was one of the messages on the jersey, and it was like, all right, thanks, dude, thanks for putting that on your jersey. You're like, that's what you picked. I think it was Gordon Hayward. I think we were making fun of Gordon Hayward. But uh, Gordon, you're looking at yeah, what Gordon Hayward, I think, has like education reform. Or yeah, something like that. no, he just put education or something. You're like, wait, that's it? Like that's all we have? Um, but uh, nonetheless, and there was one more. Who was it? Uh, you know, because one of the big messages is enough is enough, and it was a player that kept missing shots in his jersey number. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what it was. It was enough oh, is no. enough, and you're like, dude, are we real? NBA Twitter is so savage. And, and no, the, no, you know what it was. 
Gerald mm. Green. No, not Gerald Green. Uh, Danny Green with the uh, how many more? Oh. That's what it was. <laughs> it's so wrong. And and the caption was like every time Danny Danny Green breaks a shot, and it's a screenshot of the back of his jersey with how many more. See, like stuff like that. NBA Twitter is so wrong for. Uh, and then we had Jonathan Isaac, who by the way, yeah, was ACL after. Uh, he did not stand up for the national, or excuse me, he did stand up for the national anthem when everybody else took a knee. And I was like, dude, do you, I'm not going to, here's one thing I wanted to talk about with that, uh, with you, Jose. And I don't know how you feel about this. Like, I think we all like shared our jokes and we, we looked at the threads and so he tears his knee and of course, NBA Twitter gets after him and they're like, that's what yeah. you get. And like all the obvious jokes. But one of the things that I wanted to uh, drive home with that is, the movement wasn't going to propel forward or stop because of Jonathan Isaac. No, you're right. right? Like, like what? If Jonathan Isaac took a knee, okay. Like, it's cool. We're, we're in the same exact place as Jonathan Isaac not yeah. taking a knee, right? Like, he wasn't going to be a catalyst in all yeah. of this. His, the thing I didn't, yeah. I didn't like was his use of religion to justify it. Yeah. Wh- that which is that rubbed me the way, which is like, that's, that's the historic go-to of like, like bigotry and religion, like they have, they go hand hand mm-hmm. hand in hand, and historically, so it was to me, it was the way he tried to explain himself. Uh, was what's the name of the the journalist from Bleacher Report? Taylor Rourke, is it? Taylor Rook. Rook, yeah. The way he the the way he answered her questions, I really wasn't satisfied, and maybe it's I I don't need to be satisfied. It's not yeah. it's not his point for me to be satisfied, but I just that 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 aspect of it left me with a, a sour taste in my mouth. Yeah. And, and again, that, that whole thing, like his explanation isn't going to set back anything. It's not going to no. move anything forward. Like we're just, we're, we're exactly where we are, right? Like there was nothing he could have said, in my opinion, even if I would have justified a, it. Yeah. Not, not justified it. There's nothing he could have said that would have changed my mind about anything that's happening in the world today. Like I, I wouldn't have said, Oh man, that's an interesting perspective there, Jonathan Isaac. I never thought of that. Like, no, I don't. I don't think there's anything, right? Like, and I've thought right. about this. What could he have said better to? Because something in his heart said, "Look, man, my like my religious beliefs and this, and I think we're all equal and all like whatever he's thinking." I couldn't figure out an angle that would have that would have changed my perception on anything. Yeah no matter how great he said it or how bad, badly he said it like he did. Like it just, it was a fun, it, it, was, it, was, it was a story that we talked about and it was funny because people were getting their jokes off and that's fine. But it, in the grand scheme of things, Jonathan Isaac doing whatever he did and the explanation had no bearing, had no impact on any of this, you know? And it sucks that like the guy can't play basketball now because he tore his ACL. It's like that, man, that, that's rough. Um, and, and I'm sure he's getting all sorts of hate messages, right? And jokes and like, it, he's going to go through a rough time here, right? Because of what happened, obviously with the ACL recovery and everything, but man, people are probably just blowing up his comments, yeah. uh, you know? So, uh, there was that the Rockets, by the way, they got two huge wins. They beat the Bucks and the Mavericks. That was cool. Uh, They're making me believe baby. How am I? Well, hold I, on. I don't like it. I don't like it. They're making me believe. Oh, I thought you said I'm making you believe. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I just like Westbrook, Covington, and PJ Tucker. No, they're believe making me it. believe. I don't like it. I don't like this feeling. Jose, regular season wins mean nothing, man. I'm sorry. I can, they mean something in the bubble, damn it. They mean something because we can all get our gifts off of this is your king and make fun of Giannis and all that, which Clutch City did, by the way. Dave Hardesty is a good friend of mine. He's awesome. Uh, he he tweeted a GIF after the win. Because yeah, he NBA, tweeted a GIF. Yeah, uh, it's not a GIF. It's a GIF. Uh, <laughs> it's a graphic interface. So he tweeted a picture of Killmonger after the game, you know, where he uh, Killmonger is going, this is your king, and he's taking a shot at Giannis and all that. And I just was like, dude, Killmonger dies, by the way. Like, that battle was a regular season battle, wasn't it? The waterfall battle in Black Panther. That was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wasn't that a that was as regular season of a win as you can get? Because then T'Challa, he's like, all right, I know what I need to improve on. I'm gonna go recruit some people. I got some new, I got some new weapons I'm gonna work on. I got my shield. I'm ready to go. Uh, and he came back and he won. 
and Killmonger dies. Like he actually like you don't I don't know if that was the right gift to use at the time. And you got uh the rowdies were after you, weren't they? Yeah, the immediately one person goes, "Yeah, but he took the throne first. And then Dave, <laughs> Dave Hardesty responded with the same thing once he saw that guy's tweet. Like, yeah, but he got the throne first. And then I had to explain it to him. I was like, yeah, but guys, like there was an entire third act after that regular season win at the waterfall. <laughs> Wasn't it, that that felt like a that felt like a last night game when T'Challa and Killmonger first fought. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the gif you want to be using. Like, cause you're yeah, that, that might not be the right gif to use. Yeah. But that that was a fun that that was a fun uh, start to the weekend. NBA was fan the NBA bubble. They, you're right, they did a good job. Um, the crowd noise is whatever. I'm over it now. You're still on that. Okay, good. I'm still on that. I'm still on that. It sucks, dude. It sucks. It's a horrible. Like, can we just hear them? And I went to ESPN the ESPN's app. I was trying to find if I could get a raw feed of the game because I want to hear the trash talk. I want to hear. You can still hear it though. Not like today, loud, to, today for the the I was watching the Pelicans Grizzly uh, Grizzlies mm-hmm. game before this, and you could hear John Morant just cussing up a storm the whole time. They had to ju- dump John Morant like five times in the span of like three minutes. I didn't hear that part. I heard that I heard one clip uh, when I had it on where somebody was just yelling three seconds in the paint, and they were really respectful. So it probably Zion, because Zion's like the nicest kid ever. <laughs> 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 sir this is three seconds sir sir can you please look at this he's such a good kid um uh, but yeah it was awesome man i loved it it was good to hear uh to hear kevin harlan again and mike breen and oh it was so nice the was internet's so nice new to... sweetheart uh stan van gundy yes he is stan van gundy is part of uh woke twitter now yeah which is awesome the dallas mavericks ran out of steam again how about you get a win mavericks that'd be nice <laughs> how about luca Luca looks like a. Did did I already use this joke with you? I, I don't know. Hit me with did it. I use that joke with. No, I use this with uh, Nabil on his podcast. I'll just recycle material. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Luca looked like a guy who had just left a churrascaria with those meat sweats. Like he looked that out of. <laughs> My dude looked. <laughs> he was struggling, man. Didn't it look like I was like, damn, Luca, you just. <laughs> Went too hard on that, uh, on that <laughs> the Brazilian steak. Yeah, son, he loaded up on that. So, um, yeah, remind me who won the Mavs Rockets game? Oh, Rockets did. That's right. Oh, they're talking trash in the comments. There we go. We're getting some trash talk in the comments. Um, okay, so NBA bubble. Anything else that we missed from the bubble that you wanted to talk about? It was awesome, man. You're right. It was so much fun. And it looks good on TV. It looks really it, it good looks, on TV. It looks incredible on TV. Yeah, it looks way better than baseball. Baseball. Baseball is stuck in a weird place because with the national games, you want it to feel like it's a, you know, like it's a big deal. So they put the CGI fans on Fox broadcast and it looks tacky. It doesn't look good. Yeah. Um, and then nor like at a normal baseball game, there's like five important moments. So you like the crowd noise doesn't work in a baseball game to me. It's just like you're forcing this because one, there's not that many great moments to like get the crowd riled up. Like there is in an NBA game, it's back and forth. And if there's a huge dunk, people go crazy and the crowd like reflects that. And the announcers also reflect that. You know, it's different when you're not at the ballpark, right? Like for the AT&T Sports Southwest broadcast, they're not at the ballpark for road games. They're no. at Minute Maid Park. So what they're, wa- they're watching a TV screen. And then when they look up, there's nobody there. It's like the energy is different as well. Although it sounds yeah. good, the energy is different, right? Like the, the I'm not NBA, even sure it sounds that good, though. Like you don't think watch, it does? watching the Astros on Sunday when they were in Anaheim, like mm-hmm. ATT Sportsnet was killing like the road the road sound when the A when the Angels would score runs, and I thought that was weird. Like I thought that took <laughs> away from it. Like the I don't I don't I don't know, maybe it's part of it is knowing that baseball is like messing this up with the fact that they're still traveling and. They're scheduling games all, like really stupidly. Like for example, mm-hmm. the Astros just left Anaheim to go to Phoenix to just come back to Oakland. Like, why not just do the California, stay in California? Like the scheduling is, it just you can't. I can't separate myself from all of it, and I'm having a tough time with it. Maybe that's a big aspect of it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just, it just doesn't feel the same with baseball. Yeah, it doesn't work. I'd be okay if they canceled the whole season. 
Like, and, and I'm not just saying this because the Astros aren't that good because right of Justin now. Verlander. And he, yeah, Justin Verlander, <laughs> now, and he might be potentially gone for the whole year, which it's been a week now, right? So we'll find out next week who was lying. Was it Chandler Rome is a liar or is Justin a liar? We'll find out. Um, but it, yeah, like to me, I could do without Major League Baseball. Like, eh, whatever. Like, it's, it's just not it. People are getting hurt. It, they're ramping these guys up way too fast. You know, David Johnson, who's a, who played in the major leagues, he's a he's a follower of mine and a friend, a follower of mine. You like that? Like I'm a cult leader. That was weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't like weird. that. I didn't, I didn't like, like that, that phrasing. Uh, <laughs> that was weird. That's really weird. But he's a uh, he's a friend of mine, and he used to play for the Giants. And he tweeted about this where he said, like, you can't ramp these guys up this fast. You're gonna have injuries, and not just the Astros. Otani's now done. Right, like his forearm stiffness, he's done for a month, yeah. so he's going to DH. But this is happening all over. Like there are going to be a lot of injuries. Baseball is a tough one. Uh, you know, like with NBA, with the NBA, they had a lot of time to ramp up. It wasn't like let's just go play games. They had what was it, three weeks almost. So more, if I feel. I think it was. I think it was a month. Was it a month? Yeah, that's right. They went last month. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was at the eighth. beginning of June. Yeah, it was the eighth. They went. Uh, no, no, it was uh, July eighth. I believe. Oh, sorry. Was, I meant like when they announced the yeah, plans. Yeah, yeah. Was it not yeah. the beginning of June? They announced the plans, but then they had a month to actually like go through a uh, training or uh, training camp, a secondary training camp. So, yeah. Lou That's Gehrig why. is br- is, <laughs> is rolling in his grave. Baseball, we could just do it. If baseball disappeared tomorrow. <laughs> It would suck to not have the Astros, but would we really miss baseball? How many baseball <sighs> games did you watch? I've watched every game except one, I not, think, so far. Not the Astros. Not the Astros. Uh, I watched the Phillies-Yankees game, and that might be it. And that was because we I, were so hungry for sports. Yeah. I watched I, I watched part of that Braves game where the Mets blew like a big lead to the Braves, but I missed the comeback. Mm. So yeah, I, I so haven't truthfully. Truthfully, yeah. I've I've watched I've watched more base more more basketball games of teams I don't root for than I've seen baseball games of exactly of teams I don't root for. And if you ask that to the casual sports fan, ninety nine percent of us will say, "Yeah, I've never. I I don't think I've ever watched in the last three four years <clears throat> a game that doesn't feature my team." Yeah. I can't like when was like like doesn't matter Yankees Red Sox not interesting to me now like before I used to watch them but they're just not interesting now there's nothing interesting about baseball like and the ratings reflect that that's just that that's just the truth you know that's why Sunday night baseball struggles so much is because who's like what are we watching we don't know you don't know most of the guys either there's not stars on these teams A Rod is absolutely brutal as well. Yeah, my God! And they they took away the one person that was really Jessica good at Mendoza. It. Mendoza was fantastic. Like she made the game relatable to me, right? And they took her away. So I'm good. Like I don't know any of the stars. I don't know what what game did you mention? Phillies and Braves. Is that what you're uh, Yankee uh, Mets and Braves? I don't know any of their storylines. Nothing. But you asked me about NFL teams. I don't care about. MLB or NBA teams, college football teams, I can give you storylines because there's stars on those teams. So there's just my little baseball rant. And I've always said this, like, I don't think baseball, if we took it away, we'd be fine. It would suck to miss the Astros. That's it. Um, okay. Wow. We're, man, Jose, we've yeah, been we, talking we, for a while. That's awesome. We've been pretty long. Yeah. Is there anything else that we missed that you wanted to get to? I, I, I know you want to talk about Aubrey Huff real quickly. So do your rant. I want to hear this. I, honestly, I don't really have a rant. It's just more or less of why the hell are we still paying attention to this guy? Like, just Twitter is a cesspool right now, mm-hmm. and it has been a cesspool for like a year now. Like, and it it gets to the point of like, why don't you? Why don't we all just block these people? We don't. St- we can't stand. Yeah. And I've just made a habit of it. Like in the last year, I've just I just block every I block I block the freaking president, and I still see his tweets every day because everyone feels the need to own him. Like retweet his tweets and try to own him. Like, if if it pisses you off so much, just block the person. Like, that's the best advice ever. Just block him. Who cares? Like who? Yeah, who cares? Who gives? Can can I cuss? Yeah. Can I cuss real quick? Don't. don't, Who gives a bleep about Aubrey Huff? Like, who cares? (laughs) You're right. Like, stop quote tweeting him. Also, 
because that fuels the fire. Just just block them. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Do my timeline a favor so I don't have to see you mm-hmm. trying to pwn a tweet I can't see because I haven't blocked. It, it, just, here's the other thing. What When has this ever worked, right? Let's say if I quote tweet Aubrey Huff and I try to own him or try to make a point about something, when has – like that's not going to change his opinion. He's not going to be oh, – you know what? Good, good point, Raheel. I won't yeah. be a dumbass anymore. Yeah, thank you, guy. Like, wow, this is incredible. You've enlightened this is very me. Very enlightening, yeah. Yeah, by dunking on me on Twitter. That never works. You're no. right. Like, just, you know what I do? If I, ha- if I don't have the person blocked, you I, mute just keep sc- I just keep scrolling. I just keep scrolling. There's been plenty of times where I want to quote tweet something and just be like, are you dumb? You know, whatever. Every right? day. And I just don't do it. I just don't do it because it's not going to change that person's perspective. I'm not coming from a good place either where I'm trying to change that person's perspective. I'm just trying to get dunks and likes and all that too, right? So I, I like I admit that as well. So like at the end of the day, you just keep scrolling or as Jose mentioned, just mute them. Just move on. Like what is it's There's no reason. It, the worst is the presidential stuff. Do you think President Trump is going to be like, wow, this guy brings up a great point about immigration reform that I didn't think about? No, he's not going to no. do that. You know, there's too many. There's too many. One, there's too many comments. Right. There's it'll never be seen. Right. So like, what are you guys doing? Just stop. Stop fueling the fire. Just ignore everybody. If you don't like them, just ignore them. But don't ignore me. Follow me on Twitter. at <laughs> the underscore Rachel. Make sure you follow me and quote tweet me and give me likes and retweets because I like that. And thank you to everyone. Uh, I tweeted a picture and an update about my dad uh, at his store perfume time in Houston. And um, you know, like, look, every small business is going through a tough, tough time right now, right? I understand that. Uh, but they're finally back to full business hours, like regular business hours where uh, they weren't before, right? Like it was kind of hit and miss when they would be there because of uh, health issues, because of, you know, worry, because they're older, my dad and my uncle are, so they didn't want to be in a, uh, in a position where they had to be at the store and all that. So uh, they're finally back to business hours are good. So if you need perfume, colognes, watches, watch repair, go go hit up my dad. Just Google perfume time Houston. What are you doing? You don't have a job. That's go work at them. the company. Go work at the family business. Go sl- no. slang some perfumes. I- I'm helping them. I'm helping them. I'm no, doing all their. Not... I'm, I'm doing all their Google stuff now. You should be running the store while so they can stay at home and not expose themselves to the COVID. Okay, now you make me feel like crap. That's a good. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> You're right. You, yeah, you actually are right. I should, I should go to work because I have nothing you, to do right now. Your your dad ha- uh, does your dad have that that new Versace the red one? Is it called Eros? I think. Yeah, he's got that. That one's fire. You want that? I, I mean, I still have some, but I'm going. I'm going to need some eventually. So I'll hit up your you pops. Up. He's gonna hook you up. And you, go not get, go get some stories. Go get some stories from him. About Yo, he you. legit legit. I'm not, like I tweeted this. I'm not saying this to be funny. He legit has embarrassing ass pictures of me at the store because this store they they they've been running this store for almost 30 years right so like yeah. all my childhood pictures are there that's that's sweet it's awesome like it's all there and then of course he has his phone as well so he'll just ramp up he'll just go oh you want to see some pictures yeah he'll give you stories uh he's great and he might not talk to you as much now because of COVID 19 and like you know like they're being really careful yeah of course Wear a mask. Don't be a b word. Wear a mask when you're around my pa- uh, around my dad and my uncle, and Jolie, who's uh, been a, our family. Like she's been in our family for as long as I can remember. Um, don't be an a hole, please. Just wear a mask. Don't don't do your my rights, my body, all that crap. Just just wear a mask. Or go next door if you don't wear a mask. I don't care. Uh, we don't want your business. So uh, yeah. So shout out to everybody on Twitter. Thank you so much for retweeting and spreading the word. And here's my thing on Twitter, man. Like. Uh, uh, combined all those tweets and retweets and everything, I would say I think the last time I checked the impressions of like close to fifty thousand people saw it. Right? Oh, here's the thing about social media, though, man. The conversions. This is just a little social media talk, right? Like, don't get hung up on social media traffic, okay? Because it rarely converts to actual store traffic. And this is again working at, at Landry's, doing restaurant social media management working with huge brands, right? Like we'd have a viral tweet. There's no uptake in business. Like it's all fake. You know, it's all fake, right? Of those 50,000 impressions, I bet five of you guys will go and actually go to the store, which I thank you for that, which is awesome. Thank you so much. 
But the reason I'm bringing this up and giving you some of the analytics behind this, it's all fake. Okay. It's all fake. Don't think that just because you went viral that people are going to go support your business, right? Like think about how many tweets you Jose that you've retweeted where you've seen somebody go, Hey, this is my dad's business. You know, he just opened up this new, um, X store, right? New, new taco stand. Cause I've seen, I've done that one. Yeah. You know how many times I've actually gone and supported that business? Never. Wow. Real. Yeah. I, so, I go every time. No, you give me one. Give me a name. I'm gonna put you on the spot. I don't want to tell you. Oh, <laughs> oh so you don't want to help a, a small business grow. <laughs> These are my spots. <laughs> I want them to stay low key. But yeah, that's just my little thing. Like, cause <laughs> even when I see those tweets go uh, viral, which is incredible, it's beautiful, right? Like a daughter is going to tweet about something and go, yeah. You know, my dad just opened his new business, go support him. And I'm like, this is great. There's 18,000 retweets. I hope you guys go though. You know, like the, my whole thing is like, I hope you guys go. But if you're a business owner and you have one of those tweets, don't expect business to like just be all of a sudden on an uptick and like things are going to be okay. It's, it's, it's hard, man. It's really hard to get people to actually go act on what they do on digital because it's easier to hit retweet than go drive to the South side or go drive to Harwin. So just a little thought for you. Uh, Jose, I th I'm going to make the executive decision here. We're going to skip click or no click. <gasps> All right. But let's give one headline. Give people, give the people one headline. Come on. Give them one. You pick the best one. You pick the okay. best one because there's some good ones today. Well, are you sure you want me to pick one? Because maybe it's not the same, the same one. I'm, I, I'm down to two. Okay, go. Museums around the world are, com are competing to see <laughs> who has the best butt. Which I might have to, uh, I might have to volunteer you for that, buddy. You think I have a nice butt? <laughs> uh, and Russian rapper gets chopped into bits by wife. Whoa! Damn. Those give are both one. really good. You want the you want the Russian art? Right. I give me the Russian one because I I think I understand the museum butt one. Is that are they just doing statues or something? Are they? Do you think they're doing butt molds? Uh, yeah, that would be weird. <laughs> you don't think it's butt molds? It could be. I don't think it's butt molds. I don't know. I don't think so. I would. I would because I, I. I'm gonna assume it's uh, like actual statues. Who has a nice, the nicest statue butt? Is probably mm. my guess here. Because I, when I'm like, when you go, when you go to like these really great museums in Europe, the first thing that pops out, you're like, damn these. You know, these artists spared no detail. I mean, they, they just went all out on this. I mean, you all see the all the details on the cheeks. At cheeks, frontal, everything. Um, multiple holes, everything. You they don't <laughs> bro, they're like, here you go. You guys want a piece of art? Here you go. We'll let you know what we what the uh grooming quality was back in the day, everything. So Really quickly, I'll give you the, the background on that, and we can then we can move on to our Russian uh, dismemberment story. So the Yorkshire uh, Yorkshire Museum in, uh, at the end of June posted a curator battle of of their best uh, of their best statue butt, and it became it became a viral thing amongst museums where now other museums are doing the same thing. So that's the wow. background on that story. See, yeah, like I okay, look, I'll, you do the next story. I'm gonna pull up a picture. Of a museum butt? Of museum butt pictures I've taken. <laughs> you have those? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, bro. That's like... That's, that's a, a subgenre that you enjoy? No, it's just uh, you appreciate the arts, man. Some people go to, to museums, take pictures of artwork, take pictures of sculptures or or the descriptions of something because it moves them. Or he'll take butt pics. Yeah, or... Hold on. You take uh, angled pics of people's uh, privates. You think I'm making this up, bro, but uh, here you go. <laughs> Why did you take that? Because it was uh, it was an interesting angle. I'm like, wait, why? No, it's not. <laughs> just like, hold on. <laughs> I mean, hold on. I, I mean, they just, I'm telling you, this is a real thing. Uh, and I wasn't the only one, by the way. Don't make it sound like I'm some pervert. I mean, Nick, buddy, you that's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that's kind of what it looks like. Hold on. Okay, get to your Russian picture cuz I I'll, I'll I'll show you a good uh butt picture. All right, so <laughs> this is via our buddies over at Bro Bible. 
of course. A, fa- a famous uh, Russian rapper. I haven't heard of him. His name was Angie Cartwright. Real name, Alexander Yusko. Interesting yeah. for him to go with the, the uh, would you say, American name or English yeah. name. Uh, the rapper, who was 30, uh, 31, was found dismembered in his apartment in St. Petersburg. Making the story somewhat even more grimsly, his wife, Marina Col- Colon, admits, admits being the one who cut up his body while their two-year-old son was at home, but denies oh. actually killing him. The 36-year-old claims a rapper died of a drug overdose, having found a syringe next to his body, and she was just trying to make him disappear after such an inglorious death. Wow. So she was trying to do him a favor? I don't see how that's doing him a favor. Or his family a favor. Man. Russia, bro. That's morbid. That is really morbid. That's a way to end on a high note here. Gosh. Ugh. I feel dirty. Show me another uh, statue deck or something. Hold on, I got you. <laughs> I, I we just need to cleanse ourselves from that from that story. R.I.P. Uh, to uh to my boy Annie Cartwright. Hold on. I'm Go stream his music. Maybe his kid gets money off of that. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully the streams kick in. Oh man, I just had a good one for you. Oh yo, look at the definition on this man. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not going to go all the way down because I don't want to get banned on YouTube, but look at the definition, man. That's like, that's great artwork right there. And they, of course, show everything. I'm not going to are it. You're a weirdo. Dude, it's art. You have a folder of, of stat, dick stat, statues of dicks. No, dicks this of statues. is a whole... Okay, this is a whole trip from Paris, London, and Rome, mm. okay? That's why. That's why I have it. I just uploaded everything, Jose. It's not just my exclusive collection. You're Although like Jonah Hill and Super Bad, except you don't draw the dicks. You just take pictures of sculptures. <laughs> I'm just telling you, they're pieces of art. Okay, they're beautiful art pieces. We need to respect what they've done. That's why. Okay, we're done. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everyone. That was an eventful, very eventful <laughs> podcast. That was awesome, Jose. Sorry, I kept you so long. No, you're uh, good, man. Oh yeah, you don't have work. You gotta watch I don't Snatch. Have... You're gonna watch Snatch tonight, or you're gonna do usual? Probably stuff not. Tonight? Probably Dude, do not. Snatch. Do Snatch. I'm, I'll get to it tomorrow or, okay. or like a year or something. I don't know. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We appreciate you spending all of your time with us. If you made it to the end, you are a true winner. Thank you so much. I will talk to you guys next time. Jose, we'll do this again next Monday. Stay spicy.